Welcome, welcome, Pen and Ink fans. Happy Friday! We made it through another week in quarantine. Tom again here with Gold Spot Pens with a live unboxing. What do I have here? It's a beautiful new Pelican Pen special edition for 2020. So let's get to unboxing, inking, and writing with this pen. Join me as I flip the camera around to where we do the business. So, as with most Pelican pens, this particular fountain pen comes in a white cardboard sleeve. Hello, pen friends. We slide out the interior box from the outer white sleeve. We'll put that over on the side. We have the two-part Pelican box, which has a very inviting look. It has this little pull tab here that says, oh, you must pull me. It beckons to be pulled and opened. And if you are familiar with any other Pelican pen boxes, you'll notice this one's slightly different. It, instead of usually having brown here, is a nice bright green, and it's because of the pen inside. So let's pull this apart, and we're even greeted with a more special kind of inviting packaging inside here with this leatherette, soft leatherette pouch and this matching bow that's here. It's very intriguing, very colorful, fun. We'll take that out here. Then we have a little bit of tissue paper and underneath here we have the Pelican guarantee, warranty, instruction, manual and whatnot. So we'll just leave that be. It's a little booklet that they include with all of their pens. Now this, this leatherette case is pretty nice. It's a very nice presentation that looks like you're giving yourself a gift, even if you're not gifting this to somebody else. This is pretty impressive. So even if you didn't bother to gift wrap the outside, this in itself just looks really fun and inviting, I would say. I don't like pulling the bow open because I can never tie bows properly to get them to look this nice again. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of peek open here and grab the pen inside. So you could kind of use this, I would say, like you could have it as a travel case. It has the opening on the inside, it has a smaller opening over here, a smaller flap so that you might be able to put like cartridges and whatnot in the top part of this flap. But this pen does not require cartridges. So uh, maybe other things like a ink vial or a syringe, something that would be useful. So we have here plastic wrap, and we have the pen, which we have labeled here is the M200 Pastel Green, special edition for 2020. It follows the same kind of design aesthetic as some previous Pelicans that have come out in the last, let's say, few years. There was the M600, there was the uh, M605, the, the translucent or transparent white. Uh, it was like the ghost sort of pen. There was also the uh, white turquoise, uh, the violet white uh, M600 as well. But this is an M200 model. And Tom, what's the difference between an M600 and M200? Good thing you asked, because I will explain today. First, let's just take a look at this pen design. We have a kind of like a white ivory uh, cap and uh, the barrel end cap here, white section, and the gold, and we have gold tone, pretty much everything else. And the finial here, we have the pelican and the baby chick at the top, imprinted in gold with the white finial, gold crown that kind of surrounds that finial at the top, the traditional iconic pelican beak clip. I mean, besides, let's say, the Parker arrow clip, I think that the pelican beak clip is one of the most recognizable and elegant looking clips that uh, just really have a, it, it, it has like that iconic quality about the brand and really signals to you what brand of pen this is without knowing the name of it. So you have Germany here imprinted on the barrel I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, on the cap band with Pelican here. And you have the nib. It's a gold-plated stainless steel nib. 
manufactured by Pelican in Germany. So this is not a Bach or Yovo uh, rebranded nib. This is a proprietary nib and feed manufactured in Hanover, Germany. Neat thing about that nib and feed assembly is that they easily screw out. So this whole entire nib unit we offer separately on goldspot.com. So if you ever damage or want to have a second spare nib unit for your M200 pen or 205 pen, which would be the uh, stainless steel, which would be like the silver look here, uh, you could purchase them on goldspot.com. One neat thing to notice about this pen design right off the bat is the beautiful barrel. And that's really what this pen, this main calling card of this design is the pastel green barrel that's on here. It is like you see here as I'm turning in the light, highly chatoyant with that cat's eye effect, especially right here. As you can see the light hitting it, it reflects off of it almost like abalone shell without the super iridescent rainbow sort of colors, but still maintains that sort of reflective quality. Then also the translucency, I think it's one of the things that you don't really get when you see the photography of this pen is how translucent that this barrel is. And you can see as I'm actuating the internal piston mechanism, you could see the piston head going up and down. And one of the things too is I did not know until opening this pen is that the piston head is white. And that's one of those things that I just love from a design point of view that they didn't just opt to go with a black piston head. They went and they have a piston head in here that is white to match the rest of the aesthetics of the pen, which really just brings the whole thing together. In the words of the of the dude from the Big Lebowski, it really just ties the room together. It just it, it just makes my day to see that all that the design was that carefully thought of. So it's it's quite beautiful, striking, and elegant of a pen, like a refreshing springtime type of pen. I like it a lot. I like the design a lot. The M200 is a little bit on the more modestly sized pen. I would say very similar to what we looked at previously with the Sailor Professional Gear Slim, uh, where it's not necessarily a mini size pen, but it is not a large pen. And by today's standards, you know, some people could say, hey, it's kind of like on the petite side, but not really. I mean, still cap posted, quite comfortable in hand. It's very lightweight due to the amount of acrylic and resin that they use on this pen. Doesn't have any internal metal components, uh, except for, let's say, this just the nib and the, the hardware that's on here. Uh, so it does have a very nice lightweight feel in hand. And with the cap posted, feels quite comfortable. Cap posted is a little bit on the shorter side, but still quite nice overall very pocketable not a pocket worthy not a pocket pen but it certainly is something that's a little bit more compact and easy to carry than some of your big bruisers that are out there so what i also wanted to do today was we have the pen is out here we have the latest ink of the year the m the uh, i'm sorry the edelstein moonstone Yeah, and the smaller compact size, like as pen friends had noted there, the smaller compact size is more friendly towards shirt pockets. So if you have a shallow pocket and you can only fit like a, a smaller pen, of course this pen will be a bit easier to just slide into your pocket. What I did notice though with my Pelicans that I've used in the past is that uh, the, the capping, the threading on the capping, especially when you have a cap like this, unless you really give it a, a full you know, tight turn, it does easily kind of come loose if you have it clipped in your pocket for a while. So I might suggest just kind of checking in on it just to make sure that the pen did not come loose of the cap in your shirt pocket. In one way, it makes it easier to uncap the pen. It's a very smooth uncapping. It takes like, I think it's like three quarters of a turn. It's, it's hardly anything to get this pen uncapped, but at the same time, it makes it a little bit more you know, nerve wracking when you do put in your shirt pocket. So you have this here. This is the Moonstone 2020 Edelstein Ink of the Year. It's got a silver cap as opposed to the standard black cap. 
I guess to match the color inside. So we're going to fill this pen with the ink of the year. I should have just brought the piston down first here. So I'm, I just screwed the piston. I just screwed the top here counterclockwise to move the piston all the way down. Now I'm going to screw the blind cap clockwise to fill the pen. Just absorbing the excess ink that's on here. And I'll drop a few dribbles back in here. How's everybody's Friday uh, going so far? You guys looking forward to the weekend? Is there any are there any plans? Are your particular states or areas where you're located? Are uh, are you guys like opening back up again sometime soon or? Uh, are there anything, is there anything that, uh, uh, any, any sort of sign that we're going to be resuming normal anytime soon in uh, your parts of the world? Love to know. I hope that things start to uh, resume quickly. Uh, so as you can see here, I filled it up with the Moonstone and the translucency of the material shows quite a bit the color of ink that's inside. So like you could see that this pen is full. Even if you don't use the ink window, you could see that there's ink still in the uh, the uh, pastel green part of this pen. So uh, looking at the top part here, got the ink clear off the grip section. So no staining, which is good. I mean, it's gonna be a lighter color of ink, so I wouldn't anticipate it really staining that that white section, but that is a concern, a valid concern if you're purchasing a pen that has a white section, that if the ink would really start to show through in that white, but it definitely does show in that barrel. So let's take a look at this. Let's zoom up. Let's see if we can get like a better angle of me writing this here. So I'm not just, so my hand's not blocking the entire view here. This is the ink is I apologize for a second here. I'm I'm actually quite warm in the uh so I'm, I'm kind of getting into a bit of a sweat here in the room because I had to turn the air conditioner off so you could hear me accurately in this video. Uh, so it is a little bit warm here in New Jersey. I'm looking forward to some downtime this weekend. Got to get my car fixed. So I'm, I have to go see who's open and see who could uh, fix my, uh, my troubled car up. Ooh, that's a bad, let me just do that over again. The quick. Now this is an extra fine nib. So 
that being as said, it's an extra fine that, yeah, it, it does have a fair amount of feedback for an extra fine. It's more conducive to folks who like to write uh, slowly and with smaller handwriting style. So like if I'm writing very detailed notes, It's good for that sort of thing. Um, not necessarily ideal for, let's say, seeing the ink on the paper. Uh, so you could kind of get an impression from just looking at the what I've written here that it's a it's a fairly nice soft gray. This moonstone, not too much in the way of shading from what I see, but uh, you could get a little bit more of it on here. I'm gonna attempt the feats. Let's drop some ink. Somebody was asking me the other day, how do you do your ink splats? So, so I do is I'll splat a couple of things of ink here. And I kind of blow it around on the page. Like so. So we can kind of get an idea of where the lighter and darker concentrations of ink, if there's like any you know, ability for shading or sheening, you can kind of start to see it when you, you know, splat the ink on the page there and spread it around. So, uh, yeah, so it has a bit of, of feedback, but it has a good rate of flow. Can I squeeze any line variation? Let's see. It's maybe like the very tiniest bit. I really wouldn't recommend doing it a lot. Uh, let's see, do some a little bit of reverse writing here. Yeah, reverse writing is is not really all that possible with this. Yeah, it just ran it just ran dry trying to reverse write with it. So I wouldn't say uh, reverse writing would be possible with this nib. Uh, so overall, I just give you my impression about this pen. I'm reading uh, from my notes here, which I wrote with uh, Colorverse Allen Hills 84001 ink. Um, just to, in case anybody was interested. So uh, overall, I mean, I've, I've written with a few M200s and 205s before, and uh, oh, it's one of the nicest pens to uh, write with as far as a posted pen, because the cap posts really nicely and deep, and the posted length and the size, weight, just perfect comfortability for my hand. I would say this is great for medium to small hands too, uh, so it's a great pen for both men and women. Uh, if you have larger size hands, this you may want to end up upgrading to, let's say, an M600 or M800 because those are going to be bigger models, but very similar type of style, but just a larger chassis. The uh, nib sizes in general, and this I really didn't feel is true of the extra fine, um, but these are these are German made nibs, so they are, uh, you know, a little bit on the broader side. Uh, especially if you compare them with the Japanese like Sailor or Platinum nib. So an extra fine is going to be more like a fine uh, in terms of like a Sailor. So, uh, you know, it, it just kind of act accordingly when you're shopping for the particular nib size. They are uh, pretty nice and, and smooth. Even though this is an extra fine, I said it's a bit toothy. I mean, that's what you would kind of expect for an extra fine nib is it to have a bit more tooth because it is a very fine point size. The uh, warranty on this is three years. So uh, Pelican stands behind their craftsmanship and quality and uh, the pens that I've had last a long, long time. So, and there's still vintage Pelicans that are out there that are, you know, twice as old as I am and still kicking around today uh, doing well. So 
they nailed their piston mechanism and they do a great job of producing a quality writing instrument that just simply performs and lasts a long time. So the only maintenance you may have to do on this pen is to uh, open up and unscrew the nib and feed unit to access the inside of the barrel and, uh, and lubricate the piston sometimes if it does give you trouble. Um, but that piston is nice and smooth right out of the box. Just goes right up and down, very nice and smooth. Uh, they nailed it back when they originally the, got the patent for it in 1919, I believe, or yeah, I was thinking it was 1919. Um, you can correct me on that if you like, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, they've, they've been at this piston filling fountain pen game for quite some time. So they really do a great job, uh, with producing a piston fill fountain pen. The, uh, the only caveat to that is that the, uh, you know, the price is a bit high, uh, for a stainless steel nib. Uh, for this particular pen, it is a retail price of $255 US with the sale price at goldspot.com at $199.95. So it's just a shade under $200. And the matching ballpoint pen, which is available, which actually we don't have in stock at the moment, but uh, will be in stock at some point, is uh, listed at $230 and on sale for $187.95. So you'd be able to find this pen. At gold spot. Dot com. Look up uh, M 200 pastel green, or there will be a link in the description below along with all of the pertinent specifications, sizes, weights, and things like that. So uh, you'll be able to find it right on goldspot.com and purchase it directly on there. We have them in stock. We are shipping daily and uh, with about a one or two business day delay. So if you do place your order today, it may end up shipping later today or you know possibly on Monday. So uh, any of these pens are that are in stock are shipping as soon as they was we could possibly get them out. So I appreciate you guys tuning in and checking out the Pelican Classic M200 Pastel Green Special Edition of 2020, as well as the Edelstein Ink of the Year Moonstone 2020, of which we would expect to see a pen, a, a 200 or 205 pen, probably a 205 because it's silver hardware, probably going to be a 205 pen made in that color later this year. Uh, thank you. And I Wish you all of you guys a safe and happy weekend. And as always, stay inky, my friends. Take care.